Hey everyone, it's Ron from KME. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about our clamp and clamping procedure and limitations and abilities and versatility of the clamp. Um, every clamp has limitations. You know, uh, um, we try to make you try to design one clamp that will hold every knife ever made, and uh, that's just not possible. So. We, we tried for, if we can get 75% of the knives out there, eh, that's a pretty good percentage. But anyway, let's just take a look at the clamp and the way it works and start there. So we loosen up the tension knob and push forward, you see, obviously we have two two jaws. The, uh, the bottom jaw moves and the top jaw moves. And, when in, and they're both pulled tighter from the center. So when I release, they both move equally and they will move equally and grab whatever knife you have in there, be it a saber, a full flat, whatever. Uh, like I said, a dagger, um, probably not. You know, there's not a clamp in the world that likes to hold on to a dagger, so they just want to spit them out and spit them out because the, the back edge is thinner than the front edge. But uh, there's a simple procedure, and we tried to outline this briefly in the in the written instructions, but without turning the written instructions into war and peace to, that no one would read, uh, we weren't able to cover it quite as well as I would have liked. So I'm going to address it here. It's a simple procedure, and if you do this with every knife, you'll find that you have excellent results. Excellent results. And the procedure is position, line up your knife how you want it in the jaws, then pinch the jaws, then snug the clamp then tighten the clamp and let's demonstrate with uh, I'll demonstrate that on a few knives but let's start with something simple Gerber strong arm again USA hooray all USA stuff here at KMA um, you see this is a saber grind it has it starts with a rectangular spine square flat before you come to the plunge so these are relatively simple I'm going to loosen the clamp both jaws, put the knife in, and then this is how you do it, you know, just like I want to be looking straight down on the knife like I am, you you can't see it, but I'm looking straight down on these jaws, I can see the back spine of the knife, I can see how it is lined up in relation to the lines on the jaws, and when I have it right where I want it, then the most important thing, here we go, is pinch. And we're pinching top and bottom, and we're pinching right at the very front of the jaws. That causes each jaw to conform to the shape of the knife, whatever shape that might be. Then, next, snug. Just spin this while you're still pinching. Still pinching tight, just snug this knob up as well as you can. Okay? And then, last, that will hold the, uh, the knife in that position. It's snug enough that it's not going to move now. And it's centered you know the cutting edge is in the center um, everything on the KME works off the center line of the knife so then third is clamp and once you have it snugged then we're going to reach up here put a finger underneath or two fingers underneath and reach up grab that top wing of that knob or maybe it'll be over on the side and just crank it down that's it and there you have it a saber grind clamped very securely in the KME, but that's you know that's pretty easy. Most almost any clamp can do that. But uh, what about uh, full flat grinds? Full flat grinds are a little bit different, but the procedure is the same and it works exactly the same. Loosen the jaws. Put your knife in there. Again, I'm going to pull it up so I can see it because this is the view you want. You want to be looking straight down on your knife, and I'm wiggling it around. And I'm lining up my back line or whatever reference point you decide to use and I'm getting it where I want it. Okay, that's where I want it. So the first thing I'm going to do is pinch and pinch hard and right here at the front edge. Now, this is a full flat grind, but it's still, those jaws are now conforming to the shape of that full flat grind. So we pinch, snug, drop your hand back so the clamp doesn't rotate and give it that last... Mm, tighten. 
okay? One other thing, well, since we're talking about clamping, we're not talking about the base. You should never clamp a knife on the base. It makes it very difficult to self-center the blade if you're holding the blade out here and trying to turn the knob. That pinching in the beginning and positioning the knife is what centers the knife in the clamp so that you have the same angle on the top and the bottom or the left or the right, however you want to look at it. Okay. So full flat, no problem. Rock solid. <clears throat> All right, spider coast. We get lots of questions on spider coast. Uh, what I have here is a an old spider coal mule team um, project knife, and I apologize. I didn't uh, haven't got it finished yet, but I'll get there someday. But anyway, it's a typical spider coal blade. It is full flat. And it is also distal taper, meaning that the blade tapers from the spine and gets thinner, 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 thinner to go on this way down towards the cutting edge. But the blade also tapers from the plunge line at the back towards the front. So at the front, you're much thinner here than you are there. So now your jaws can't even be parallel to hold that. They've got to be kind of cocked. Well, there's enough play in the built into the KME that those jaws can individually twist a little bit. So it's just exactly the same. Open the jaws, put your knife in. Now I may not want to line the spine perfectly up with the jaws, but I'm going to find some kind of reference point here that I like. And I'm going to try and clamp it the same way every time. All right, I like that positioning. Same story, pinch. But now, because this is a distal taper and this is thinner over on this side, instead of just pinching the center of the jaws at the front, we're going to pinch that corner and let those jaws rotate and find that shape of the blade. You understand? It's thinner on this side, so we want them to twist. So then, once you do the same, pinch, snug, hold the clamp, tighten. There you are. Full flat. Distal taper, locked in, ready to sharpen. Okay. Um, there are, it used to be everything was either full flat or, to, or um, saber, but now we have all kinds of crazy grinds. Here's a HK mini axis in D2, and you'll notice that it's got a swedge on the top or a false grind. It's, just, it's still the same. You know, open it, clamp. Set it on there. Now I'm going to line it up. And I want, you see there's a little, just a little bit of flat land over here. I would like to have at least one corner of the clamp on that. It's not ne absolutely necessary, but it helps. Pretty close to that thumb stud. So just letting you know what I'm doing here. And now again, I'm going to line it up. From my view, I'm sorry I can't show you this for the camera, but you just, you know, this is the view you're supposed to be using. Same thing, I have it where I want it. Pinch, pinch the very front jaws. Get them, get those jaws to align to that blade shape. Snug. Then drop your hand back and tighten. That's it. It's in there. And it's centered. You know, you'll have the same angle on both sides. On the video. Always difficult on video. Things don't work out quite like you plan. Um, like I say, pinch. All right, let's try it again. Pinch this side. Spin this up. Lock it in. There. Now you got. It. All right. So, oh, the other thing. Uh, Cerakote, or a really well polished blade, or something that uh, you really don't want scratched. The uh, the KME jaws are obviously rubber lined or neoprene. So we'll take, say, uh, my prize Guardian Tactical Alexis. Alexis. I got a blade 2015. And you see, this is, this is kind of a saber, but it's got a thumb notch in the top plus a false grind. It's a kind of weird shaped blade. But even so, and what I really don't want to do is scratch this. 
Um, most of my knives I use and I beat them up. This one I try to take a little bit better care of. And the rubber in the jaws helps. So loosen the jaws. And I think you guys can pretty well predict by now. What are we going to do? We are going to center, position the blade where we want it. Pinch the very front edge. Position, pinch, snug. Then drop your hand back so the clamp doesn't rotate and tighten. Mm. That's it. You know, give it that last oomph to lock it in. And there you go. And now that's in there very securely. It's centered so that I'll have the same angle on both sides. And the rubber in the jaws is preventing it from get being scratched or damaged in any way from the clamp. So, so that's pretty much it. I mean... Um, bigger full flat here's an Ontario tack this is actually we did this this is a full flat pretty heavy probably about 3 16 thick um, it, it, it works the same 3 16 on a full flat is about the max like I said all clamps have limits and on a full flat grind uh, 3 16 is about the max that's going to self center for you so the same thing I'm going to line up the spine and the back line so Position, pinch, snug, tighten. There you go. Three sixteenths, full flat, locked in there. Beautiful for sharpening. Okay, now that pretty much covers our, our folders and our sheath knives and whatnot. Uh, how about pen knives? Let's, let's switch, swap out for the pen knife jaws because they act uh the rules are still the same but it's just a little bit different um actually before i do that we just mentioned that uh the three sixteenths on a full spine on a full flat grind is about the max you're gonna get on a saber you can go a lot bigger how much bigger let's uh how about condor kukri a big knife. I'm not sure if it's a knife or half axe or whatever, but it's cookery. And this is three eighths in spine. But because it's a saber, I can still do it. And the same thing. I'm going to line up the spine where I like it. I'm going to pinch. Once I have the position, I'm going to snug. And then I'm going to tighten. And on a big knife like that, I might try to tighten a little bit more, but there you go. Condor Kukri, 3 8 thick, saber grind, in the KME, sharpenable. You know, here's one, I'm not sure, yeah, and this is one of the few cases because look how heavy this knife is. Ugh, just the weight of that handle makes that clamp want to rotate. This is one of the few times that we would actually tighten up this spring knob. Two or three turns so that I can now work on it. Still rotate it, but the, the clamp is supportive enough. The rotation, the weight of the handle won't make it rotate. So, anyway, yeah, three eighths in a saber grind. It may be bigger. I'm not sure. That's just how, the biggest knife I have. Okay, let's put that aside. And move to pen knife jaws first. Back this. As soon as you take a big knife out, back this back off. The tension knob should always be flush with the threads at the back. Okay. So now we want to put the pen knife jaws in. Back your knob off a little further than usual. And the trick that I have found for switching the pen knife jaws, switching jaws, or any jaws, is uh, down to take the jaws out. Point, point sharpener down push forward, open them up, and they'll about fall out. Now, while you're still pushing on that plunger, turn it up to put the new jaws in. See, that way gravity can help you. It'll hold that jaw while you put the second one in, and just drop it into place. Tighten the knob back up into working range. And, all right, pen knives. 
little buck sheep's foot and bring this up here you can see that that is actually a saber grind it's a tiny little knife uh, but it is a saber it's not a full flat or a full hollow so when you're using the pen knife jaws and a full flat or excuse me a saber you want as little of that blade in those jaws as possible like never come back even to the first line I want to see see the thumb clip the nail clip when I have that clamp I actually want to be able to see the bottom of that it's amazing how little of the knife has to be in the clamp I'm actually lining up the front of the jaws right now right where the saber intersects the uh, the primary grind and it's the same thing pinch snug and then tighten and there you go little tiny buck sheep's foot saber grind look how little of that blade is in there maybe maybe a 16th you can actually see the nail notch sticking out but look it's in there tight you know very much sharpenable and to take it out you want to pinch Always pinch the jaws while you're taking the knife out, too. Uh, whenever we're putting a knife in or out of the jaws, it's both hands on the sharpener, not on the knife. And we're going to just pinch, loosen the, loosen the knob, and then once the knob's loosen, we'll pull it out. Here's a, uh, a buck. I believe this is 30, 300, 308. I should have two pairs of glasses, but this, this knife is a full hollow grind from top to bottom and a full flat when we're into slip joints a full flat or a full, full hollow needs to go into clamp just a little bit deeper than a saber so but it's still the same thing I'm going to put it in there and actually I like to do it with the nail notch up so I can see what I'm doing this gives me a better sense of what's going on you know how how much I have in there so I have it positioned I'm pinching I'm then snugging and then hold the clamp again and tighten and there you go so here's our little Victorinox keychain knife the blades uh Inch and three sixteenths long and three sixteenths from spine to cutting edge. Jeez, I can't even get it up there. There you go. A little tiny. And it's even difficult to tell is it a full flat or whatever because it's so small. It tends to be I, I would I would almost call it a full flat, but it's like I said, it's kinda of hard to say. It's so small. But this is one for sure that you just barely want a tiny little bit of those that blade in there, I probably have a 32nd, I'm looking at it, nowhere near that first line. I probably have a 32nd of blade inside the jaws. Again, same thing though. Once you got it where you want it, as far as position, pinch and pinch hard. And then snug. And then drop your hand back and tighten and crank that down. And there you go. Let's see if I can get this to where you guys can see it. 316 blade. I know I can get this at 18 degrees on the sharpener. Um, I don't know why anyone would want to really sharpen it that low, but uh, you can. Um, but you know, 20 degrees, no problem. I have done them as low as 17, but you're coming pretty close to hitting those pen knife jaws at that point. But, and same thing. When we go to uh, remove it, pinch so the knife doesn't fall out, loosen it up, take them out. Uh, matter of fact, that same procedure is exactly the same for the for the scissor sharpener. Loosen the knob. Put your scissor in. I like, like I said, I like to come from the bottom and then come up out of there. I'm going to, again, I'm just going to turn it so I can see what I'm doing. And what I want is the top edge of the scissor to be pretty well parallel with the top of the scissor jaw. Right there, that's where I like it. So I'm going to pinch. And then in this case, I don't have to snug. I can just go right to tighten.
there you go and that is the desired effect see how the cutting edge is pretty well parallel with the top of the jaw that's it but that that position pinch snug tighten will work extremely well on almost any knife that you ever need to put in the, in the jaws so uh, just wanted to pass that on to you and then if you want to move to the base move to the base but don't don't clamp your knife on the base you know it makes it very difficult I'm trying to put this in there and line it up and hold the clamp and then you also run a chance of the knife being in the in the clamp a little bit crooked where it's not self-centering um, once you have it clamped then you can move to the base and sharpen if you prefer but don't clamp on the base so anyway that's our tip for today and uh, thank you very much and we we'll look forward to talking to you and hearing your ideas and thoughts because we're always trying to improve thank you very much guys